This is the last time they see each other now. While David was at Horish in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. So now Saul is chasing him around. And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horish. I want you to think about this phrase. And helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. And again, the two of them made a covenant, or maybe you say they renewed their covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horish. Uh, I'm going to bring it back. This is probably the last time David saw Jonathan. How did Jonathan help in this difficult time? So someone had asked in the earlier session that I did, you know, didn't Jonathan also know? I mean, Saul brought it up. Don't you realize, Jonathan, that as long as David's alive, he's going to be king? Did Jonathan know that? Absolutely he knew that. Right? Why was he okay with that? Well, he knew that was the Lord's will. Right? Have you ever done this with your buddy? Like, when, maybe when you were a little younger, you, like, came up with a, you know, a plan to, like, take over the world or maybe just to, like, take over your sisters and her friends in the neighborhood and, like, you were going to rule the world. Right? Um... I, I lived in an inner city, Milwaukee, and in my, my street, um, there was a black kid, I was a white kid, and there was a Chinese kid, and we had our own club. We were BWC, black, white, and Chinese. We were going to rule the streets of Milwaukee. We had it covered. Right? You ever do that? So, that, that's, I imagine they must have had those conversations. Jonathan realized, the Lord put this in place. David, you're going to be the king. Now, I don't know that God ever said Jonathan would be second, but I guess he was okay with David being the king as long as he knew, and I'm going to be second, right? I will, I will be the guy, but, but there's, this, there's this comfort level with the Lord's will. Back to the question. How did Jonathan help David? Find strength in God. And, and let's, let, one step further, right? So you see that in verse 16? He helped him find strength in God. How exactly did he do that? Okay. Well, I think, I think it's right there, though, in the next verse. Prayer is part of it. What did he tell him in verse 17? How did he know that? David had already been anointed. Right? I know what you think David told him. Yeah, Samuel the priest came and anointed me, and, and I'm going to be the next king. And so, so this is what we heard a little bit earlier, too, in the, in the keynote, when Pastor John Enter was saying, Eve was perfect and she was standing firm, and the lion of God's will was over there, and the devil was tempting her, getting closer and closer and closer. Well, when we stand firm, what do we stand firm on? We stand firm on the truth and promises of God. That's where we find our strength. And this Christian friend came and said, David, my father's chasing you. He wants to kill you. But remember what God said. God said, you will be king. Don't be afraid. My father will not kill you. And don't forget, I'm going to be second, right? right? There's strength in God because the strength comes from standing firm on the truth and the promises of God. And here is David's best friend giving him exactly what he needs. A reminder of that promise. I just mentioned to you that my dad died. He died on February 3rd. It's been two and a half weeks. How many of you have had a loved one die? Most of you, I'm guessing. How many of you have been close enough where you've had to stand in the line where people come through at the visitation? Have you had to do that? Tell me, what do people say when they come through to, to, to comfort you? Right? That's why they come, right? What, tell me, what are some of the things they say? Which is a great thing, right? That's sympathy, right? And, so you have, and sometimes the people come and you don't know them. Like I had, uh, I had a guy come that said, I've been living in Appleton for 50 years, but I grew up on 51st and Hampton. I grew up three houses down from your dad. Nice to meet you. Never met him before. But he said, and I'm sorry for your loss, and that helps. Other people come through, they're your family, they're your friends. What, what kinds of things do people say then to try to help you feel better? Okay, like there's something's a little off. Okay, what else? I wish more people would say that. What do they often say? It's usually a little more generic than that. He's in a better place. Is that true? Yeah. But isn't that better? He's in heaven. And I even like to say he's with Jesus. He's not a Disney world. 
He's not in Mexico at his favorite all-inclusive resort, right? He's not just in a better place. He is in the best place you can be. Remember in the keynote when uh, Pastor John said, you know, it must have been really cool when Adam and Eve were in the garden and God came down like, oh, hey, look, it's God. He said, that's what heaven's going to be like. Yeah, with Jesus. And so sometimes I had the opportunity to serve others as they came. And, and, and I don't mean to criticize people. They all meant well. And, and they may, may very well have been thinking, but... Why not actually give me, yeah, what I already know, but what I so desperately need to hear? There's more comfort, right? There's, a, there's another promise. There's the promise of reunion. There's the promise of the resurrection of the body. When you can go, and this is only one example, right? But in a funeral, when you can go and say with confidence that this believing brother or sister is with Jesus and you will see them again and there's a comfort. This is standing firm on the promises of God. That's real strength. It's better than something that's not true, like he's an angel. That's not necessarily, that's not true at all. Or he's watching down on you. Maybe. Kind of doubt it. Right? Give me a promise. Tell me what God says. And that's exactly what David or Jonathan did for David.